Right, we're going to go ahead and introduce the topic of shape functions using truss elements. Let's go ahead and take a look. First thing we have is the displacement function. The displacement function is a function that represents how displacement can vary throughout the element. And we have shape functions. Shape functions describe the influence of the displacement for a given degree of freedom throughout that element. And the main difference between these is that the displacement function is written in terms of the shape functions, more specifically the product of the shape function multiplied by its corresponding degree of freedom. So here we have an example of a truss element, two displacements, and we can go ahead and write the shape function in terms of, or pardon me, the displacement function, that's it, that's the displacement function, in terms of its shape functions and each shape function multiplied by its corresponding degree of freedom. And there's the displacement function. All right. So the main question is, is how does the displacement vary across the element? In other words, like what type of polynomial can we use to describe the displacement throughout the element? So for line element, they actually use governing physical equations. All right. So when we have an axial stiffness, we can say linear strain assumption, but actually with axial loading, if there's no additional force applied, if the cross-sectional area is the same, we're going to have the same strain, constant strain. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, when we go ahead and look at the transverse or bending stiffness, start looking at beam element type stuff, then we use the equation of the elastic curve to kind of describe how that element can possibly deform over its length. So while line elements use governing physical equations, the 2D and 3D elements actually assume a displacement profile and we'll get to that later. So starting with the truss bar, we know that there's constant axial strain because you can only have loads applied at the nodes and if that's true then the displacement must vary linearly and so if it can vary linearly that means that we will only have of course like some displacement with one x term, right? No, it's not x squared or anything like that. There's our truss bar, undeformed there's our deformed truss bar, there's our nodal displacements, there's x, there's the length of the bar, and so we're going to go ahead and apply our boundary conditions to this equation, which is the fact that we know that the displacement at 0 is equal to the displacement at node 1, displacement at L is equal to u2, and we end up getting the following equation. Fantastic. Well, we want to go ahead and group those terms together. So when we go ahead and rearrange this, we get the following. And we say, well, that's going to be our shape function for node 1. And that looks just like this. It's linear, right? And notice how it goes from 1.0 at x equals 0 to 0 at x equals L. And varies linearly throughout. So we can kind of see how the, the, the shape function represents the influence of our displacement at node 1. In other words, well, when our we're looking at x equals 0 at node 1, well, then, like, the displacement is the displacement in node 1, and that's what the shape function represents. And then, of course, there's no influence once we get to x equal L. So go ahead and take a look at our shape function for node 2. And, of course, this one varies linearly still, but it goes from 0 to 1. So this one represents the influence that the displacement at node 2 has on the overall displacement for the element. So once again, we have our displacement function for a truss bar in terms of our shape functions and our nodal displacements. There is our truss bar again with the displacements. There's our displacement function written in terms of our shape functions and their corresponding displacements. There's the shape function for node 1. And how it varies throughout the element, there is our shape function for node 2, and how it varies throughout the element. And that brings us to our reflection questions. So the first question we have is, can you describe the difference between a shape function and a displacement function? The two topics that we had for this lesson. Finally, and then the next one is, what is the value of a shape function at its corresponding degree of freedom or node, in this case, since we're looking at a truss element,
And how about if we look at the other node, or any other node in case of a, a shape function for uh, things like 2D elements? And next question is, is how does the shape function vary along the length of a truss element? And the final question is, is how does the displacement function vary along the length of the element? All right, and that, my friends, concludes this introduction to shape functions and displacement functions.